tonight, the ACC Network Extra brings you men's college basketball from the PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina, as 2-0 NC State squares off with 0-1 Bryant. Hello, everybody. We welcome you courtside here in the PNC. My name is Andrew Sanders, joined by Chucky Brown. Glad to have you along with us for a good ball game tonight. Chucky, as we look at the Bryant Bulldogs, this is a team that's a little bit undersized tonight. They want to get out and run. They want to shoot threes. Yeah, they want to get up and down, shoot the three ball. In order for them to stay in this game, they have to make shots and also take care of the ball. Take care of the basketball. And well, we'll take a look at Bryant and where they were picked in the preseason poll, eighth. And that's a little bit low according to some people right. around the program. And we look at some of the talent that they have. I would have to agree with that as well. Yeah. they. they these early season predictions, people don't really know. So Brian is figuring out who they are and their identity. So I'm sure they will finish a lot better than eighth. So you say throw those out the window. Throw those out the window. Now for NC State, you said Brian's got to take care of the basketball. Well, it's been difficult to do this. You know, when Kevin Keats took this job, he said we are going to play with full effort. We're going to play pressure defense. They've done that through two games. Yeah, they've done that through two games getting their hands in the passing lanes, letting their defense create their offense, and they've been doing a good job, and that's a fun way to play. Time to take a look at the starters first for the visitors from Rhode Island, Ikenna and Duba. Adam Grant, the big scorer, had 24 against Georgia, and keep an eye on Ryan Lehman, the younger brother of Jake, making his first career start in college. And for NC State, this lineup for the Wolfpack features a couple of transfers, Al Freeman, Sam Hunt to go along with the redshirt senior, Leonard Freeman, Torin Dorn, and Markel Johnson is the sophomore point guard. And he really, this is his team now, Chucky. He's a young guy. He Remember, he graduated high school a year early, so he just turned 19 last month, and he's got the keys to the car now. Yeah, he's got the keys to the car. He's a very good player. He, last year he had to play behind Dennis Smith Jr. He got to learn, so this year he's able to put what he learned from watching onto the floor. Underway in Raleigh. Bryant starts off with the basketball, and here's the scorer, Grant. He'll pull up 15 feet. Baseline jumper is good in an early lead for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that was a nice little two dribble to the baseline pull-up shot right there. He's going to get his shots. Yeah, yeah, he's going to put it up. He's not afraid at all. <laughs> Al Freeman to Leonard Freeman. Nice touch inside for number one. Yeah, well, that's where NC State has a great advantage right there because no one from the Bryant Bulldogs can match up with Leonard Freeman. He's just too big and too strong. And after any made basket, you know NC State is going to pressure. They pick it up full court. Freeman hounding Grant. Yeah, this is a good way for NC State to also ram down and take a little bit away from the offensive end. Johnson got his hand in there on Aduba. And we'll take a look at the head coach of the Bulldogs, Tim O'Shea, in his 10th season. He's been the head coach all 10 years. They've been in Division I. They haven't made the NCAA tournament yet. That's their goal this year. Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a great goal for all of the teams, that, all of the schools that only get one bid. So, you know, you have to dominate your conference. This would be a good measurement stick for where they think they can finish in their conference. Lehman able to lay it in, getting his first career start. Sam Hunt, he can really shoot the three. Comes up a bit short. Yeah, that time that was a contested three, but Sam Hunt is used to taking those shots, so maybe later on those will fall. Naduba, kick to the corner, and you said it. Bryant, you know they're going to shoot a lot of right. threes. They've got to shoot better than 25%, which they did against Georgia. So far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. That time it was a dribble drive to the corner. The help came off, and you don't want to come off the help on the corner on the strong side where the ball is going because usually that guy in the corner can shoot the ball. Markel Johnson, straight away three is off the rim. Yeah, right now NC State has to be patient and get the ball inside. Really shouldn't really settle for those three-point shots, especially early in the shot clock. Naduba is guilty of an offensive foul. Markel Johnson drew it. Kevin Keats in his first season, you see what he did with UNCW, comes in very highly regarded and so far so good. The first two wins, we showed you that graphic, made field goals and turnovers. The fans have loved his style of play so far. Yeah, it's a fun style to play. Kids love to play that way, getting up and down, playing pressure defense. You have to use bodies when you play that style of play. Here's some good defense by Lehman and the Bulldogs. Grant, a transition three. They're knocking down everything right now, Chucky, and Coach Keats wants time out. Yeah, that's a good early timeout. Right now, the, the confidence is flowing. Here you see 
Jake Lehman, uh, Jake Lehman's younger brother, I should say, got his <laughs> hand in the passing lane and a nice transition three in rhythm. So you could not imagine a better start for Bryant, 10-2. to two. They haven't missed anything yet. Yeah, well, that after coming off the 25% the shooting night against Georgia, I mean, the law of averages says you're going <laughs> to make some shots eventually if that's what you do. So right now they're making shots. NC State has to try to get up in them and make them a little uncomfortable and, and make those threes contested. Right now the shots are not, have not been contested. Right. So NC State has to contest it, run them off the three-point line, and not let them shoot the threes that they want. Already five points for Lehman, five points for Grant. Coach Keats calling a quick timeout, trying to wake his team up defensively. Torin Dorn had it knocked away. Right. Oh, he's so strong with the basketball, he got it back. Yeah, well, that's the advantage that NC State has. Right now, you don't want to get up into a, a three-point shooting contest with this team when you're the bigger, stronger team. That time, Torrin Dorn put the ball down on the floor and was real patient and got in the lane and caused a lot of reaching in there. Now he's at the line. Dorn, as you see, red shirt junior from Charlotte. Off with the first free throw. You know, one thing about making every shot for Bryant NC State, they want to get out and run too. We right. expect this game to be maybe not quite a track meet, but close to it. You can't get out and run when you're always taking the ball out of your own basket. Exactly. You can't get out and run if you're slowing down and, and the defense has an opportunity to be set. Now, NC State has an opportunity to set up the press, and we'll see what Bryant does against the press. Bryant did a nice job taking care of the basketball against Georgia. They only turned it over 14 times. This is going to be a tougher test against this relentless pressure. So far, they've been able to break it nicely. Grant, no look pass, down low. That was a nice play that time by Bryant. Bryant has guards in the game, so it's harder to pressure them. NC State may have to fall back a little bit and give a, a, a little bit of a token press. Hunt's rhythm three comes up short. Yeah, a little bit of a quick shot right there. Right, right now, you need to be a little more patient if you're NC State. Look and get the ball inside to Leonard Freeman. Back-to-back -back buckets for Boschko Koster. And Bryant, they're still 100% from the field. Yeah, well, they, they, they also showed the ability to put the ball down and attack the glass. NC State may need to step in and help on defense a little bit better. Freeman, they want him to shoot a lot this year. They're going to rely on him offensively. An offensive rebound leads to a bucket for Sam Hunt. Yeah, anytime you have offensive rebounds or anything like that, uh, NC State can cash in because Bryant, they struggled against Georgia on the glass as well. So you think second chance opportunities for the pack is going to be a key storyline? Yes, and taking good shots for the pack. They can't come down and take the first open look. They have to be patient and move the ball around and make Bryant use some energy on defense. This is Lehman, left corner. Gives it up to Grant. He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot tonight with 10 to shoot. Trying to drive on Dorn. Got up in the air, didn't know where to go. And Lehman turns it over. Yeah, that was a good job, though, that time by Bryant being patient. They didn't force any shots. Also a good job by NC State defensively. That time, the defense was just better than the offense. Freeman. Goes away from the screen from Leonard Freeman. Good defense by Bryant. Hunt with a tough shot. Offensive rebound. Sloppy play from NC State offensively. Yeah, that was a good defensive possession by Bryant. So with the first media timeout, Bryant, what a start. The Bulldogs haven't missed yet. Six of six from the field. They lead it 14 to five. Braxton Beverly of NC State. He's back just about an hour before tip off today. You see smiles all around <laughs> because it was announced that the NCAA cleared him to play. This is a case that certainly drew a ton of attention amongst the national media. Get a look at the timeline for Braxton Beverly. Attended summer classes because he graduated early. Right. Then after Thad Mata was fired, he was still attending classes, decided to transfer to NC State. Initially denied, the appeal was denied. The NCAA just about an hour ago 
We receive word, changed their mind. He is cleared immediately, and they expect him to play in this game. Yeah, well, that's awesome for the kid. Uh, it's very unfortunate that he had to sit out uh, because you, a lot of times you go to a school because of the coach. I came to NC State because of Jim Valvano. I really yeah. didn't know much about NC State, but I knew Jim Valvano. So, you know, it's unfortunate what he went through, but glad he's able to play. A sloppy pass thrown towards the NC State bench, and there's the first Bryant turnover. Yeah, that was good pressure, ball pressure that time by NC State. They need to do more of that uh, and not let this lead get too far, get too big to where they're, they're pressing to, to have to be forced to shoot threes. Torin Doran pull up is short. Yeah, well, NC State, what they have to do, they have to be patient. They have to get the ball inside. The threes are not falling. Right. The best way for the three-point shot to fall is inside out where the shooters have rhythm jump shots where they're going in, where they're flowing into the shot. And NC State has not done that yet. We'll back 0 of 5 on three-pointers so far. Nearly a steal. Now there's numbers for the Bulldogs. Omir Yurt, 7 into the game for the first time. Gets the loose ball. Near the lob inside, Dorn will score it. Good pass that time by Markel Johnson. Way, way to keep your eyes up and see what's in front of you. He didn't have his head down dribbling. He had his eyes up, and he was able to see Torn Dorn for the layup. A lot of people think Markel Johnson is a perfect fit for this system. He's had nine assists and four steals in each of the first two games of the Wolfpack. Yeah, he's a very athletic guard. He uses his hands a lot. He's got really good quickness. So this type of up and down type of play will fit his style very good. Coster slips a pass inside. Grant trying to attack, and he had his pocket picked. Alaric Freeman, and you can see right now mm -hmm. the Bulldogs are willing to foul. They don't right. want NC State to get out. They don't want the crowd to get into it after a big dunk. Right. When you're, when you're on the road and you're the team, the underdog, you do not want – right now they have the crowd out of the game. They don't want to do, have anything happen to where the crowd gets in the game, the players start to feed off of that, and that time uh, – Bryant actually did the right thing by going back door. They were just unfortunate with the pass. NC State was able to get a hand on it. Into the ball game now for the first time is LeVar Bats for NC State. Freeman tried to force it. Yeah, that's the right play, though. That's the right play. You take that because. You like that. Everything yeah, I like going that. To the Everything rim. going to the rim because right now the shots are not falling. Good pass inside. There's Sebastian Towns. And what a great story for the Bulldogs to see him playing today. About three weeks ago, he had an appendectomy. Wow. Missed the first game against Georgia. They don't expect him to play a lot. As I believe we're going to have an offensive foul here on Omir Yurt 7 on the screen. But here's a look at the feet inside. And now you can already hear the roar of the crowd. Braxton Beverly just checked into the right. game for the first time for NC State. Yeah, right now, if you're NC State, you need some type of a jolt, it looks like. You know, this is... They're, what, third game in five days, so uh, players might not be used to that that type of professional type of atmosphere. So now you need some type of a jolt. So this is the perfect time to insert Beverly into the lineup. Can't imagine what his emotions must be like right now. Grant will try a wing three, and he knocks it down. He is feeling it so far. Yeah, he's feeling real good right now. He came off a, another, another rhythm three. So when you see... Uh, Bryant, when they're taking their threes, they're in rhythm taking them. Right there, that was a rhythm three where he came off of a ball screen, was able to get two dribbles and go right up with it. The first three knocked down by NC State, now one of six. Bryant is eight of eight. I'm a big law of averages guy. I like when you said that, hey, they're not going to shoot 25% again. No. On the other side, I don't think they're going to keep up 100%, but if they get looks like that, right. they will. Yeah, well, NC State right now has to get the weak side defense in on those drives and have to be able to get out to those shooters. So they've been making the threes, so now NC State is concerned about that, so they're not coming off the help as much. But you have to rely on your teammates and rely on your system and, and come in for the help and help your man and, real, and, and just – have faith that your partner's going to help you. Yeah. Torin Doran will go to the line, shoot two. He's one of two on the night so far from the charity strike. Doran got off to a great start last year for NC State, about nine games into the year. Right about the time Omir Yurt 7 came back, the lineup right. kind of got shuffled. Right. And he, I wouldn't say he disappeared. It's just that he wasn't the same player that he was the first nine games. Right. And so... They really worked with him this year on getting his confidence up. Mm -hmm. 
because he is an ultra-talented player. Right. Has been off to a great start so far this year. Had 16-8 and eight against BMI, 14.6 rebounds against Charleston Southern. Yeah, he's a guy that could do – like he's, he's not a guy that does – not one thing particularly yeah. well. He does everything pretty good. So he's a guy that you have to have out there. I consider him like a glue guy. Is that a missed shot from Bryant? <laughs> yeah, but NC State cannot allow Bryant to get second chance opportunities. That they cannot do. It took about seven and a half minutes in this game. The, really the only way that Bryant has faltered is with the turnovers. They've now right. turned it over six times, but their offense has been clicking. They passed the ball and then been dead-eye shooters. Yeah, they've been making NC State work on the defensive end, and they've got pretty good guards out there, so they're, they're not afraid of the NC State pressure. So NC State will have to find a way to make them uncomfortable, and that that's to get up in them, but they also have to have good help defense in the back. Beverly a little strong offensive rebound from Freeman. He cleans it up. Maybe a little adrenaline going for yeah. him right now. Yeah, well, that's good. He's a shooter. He comes in. He's going to shoot the ball, but the good thing for NC State is that they have a guy like a Leonard Freeman who's a workman down there, and he's going to get that glass. McHugh all the way to the rack, and he forced it up, boarded up by Al Freeman, the transfer from Baylor. See, those are the type of shots that NC State needs right there for, for them to take. And right here, again, NC State on the offensive glass. They have a serious size advantage, and now that, uh, uh, Brian is going to have to decide what they're going to do with that. Coach Keats put in a couple of new players. You see Hicks, you see Freeman. They're cleaning up the glass. And the Wolfpack has got the lead to just six. Wednesday, November 15th, Ace Koenig and the NC State Wolfpack women's basketball team will host UNC Asheville. You can watch it right here on ACC Network Extra using the Watch ESPN app at 7 o'clock. Well, Chucky, Bryant is 9 of 11 from the floor overall. They're right. a perfect 3 of 3 from the bonusphere. And again, this is exactly what they wanted to do. Right. All going according to plan so far. Yeah, they wanted to get up and down. But here you see these are all rhythm threes, dribble, draw, uh, draw and drive, and kick uh, three-point shots. So, And you saw the one three that Lehman had. The help came off the corner. When, when there's a dribble drive to the corner, that strong side corner d defender cannot come off and help because normally a team has a guy in the corner that can make that shot. So the help has to come from the weak side, and, and NC State didn't do that. Easiest shot, the corner three. And Bryant, so far, you know, they had a 12-point lead at one point in this first half. Beverly thought he might have knocked the ball off of Lehman's body. Instead, it'll be a foul on number 10. Saw him in shoot-around today. Uh-huh. And by, by the way, Coach Keats, they get after it during <laughs> shoot-around. Everything is ultra-competitive. They were keeping score. But Beverly was out there. He's knocking down threes on the scout team. Just a couple hours later, finds out he's cleared. And now here he is in the PNC Arena. And now here's a loose ball turnover. Good Freeman pressure. will kiss good. it off the glass. Yeah, good pressure by NC State that time, creating a turnover. They were able to set up the press because they had to take the ball out and let the defense get set. Now seven turnovers for Bryant. Naduba gets it over the timeline. Grant has been on fire so far. Down to Sebastian Towns. Pretty shot. It's off the rim. Good looking stroke from the big fella. Yeah, he had a mismatch that time with Beverly, so he turned face and shot the jump shot. Good shot. Good look inside. Johnson to Leonard Freeman. And that's exactly where NC State needs to go. And those, those three-point shots that they were missing earlier, they will start to fall. Beverly got a deflection. He'll get it back and reverse it. Tie ball game. An 11-0 run for the Wolfpack. Timeout, Bryant. Yeah, that time Bryant, was, Bryant uh, forced a pass. Beverly was able to get his hands on the ball and create a deflection. Layup for NC State. So far, NC State They've gone on some runs this year. They right. started off the game against BMI 23 to four. Right. They had a 17-0 run to close out the first half against Charleston Southern. And really it's because they're able to turn you over right. and turn those into easy buckets. And here's a look at what just transpired. I mean, it, they come at you fast. Yeah, well that's what happens when you have pressing teams. You might go through a low where you don't get any steals for a little bit. 
But then as the game goes on, now you go on these runs. Basketball is a game of runs anyway, but it's really a game of runs when a team starts to press. Great sign right there. You know, it was trending on Twitter, hashtag free Braxton. <laughs> now it's, well, he's been freed. <laughs> he's been freed. <laughs> So just like that, 21 all. Just a moment ago, it feels like Bryant was up 14 to 2. Yep. And another turnover. It's Beverly again. He feeds Darius Hicks just short. Yeah, that, that, that's a play where Hicks has to finish. He didn't finish it, but those are those, are those and ones that you, when you go back in the videotape and you, and you see that, you, you kind of kick yourself like, man, I should have finished that. So how about the spark that Beverly has given uh -huh. NC State now? You know, yeah. Coach Keats wants them to get about 40 deflections a game. He's right. already got three or four himself in two minutes. Right, and, and at the time when he was inserted into the lineup, NC State needed that, that jolt because they were down and, and what the, the energy wasn't there. So it, it was a perfect time to, to put him in, in the lineup, so it was a great move by Coach Keats to do that. Darius Hicks makes the pair. And NC State has its first lead of the ball game. Naduba will pull it out. He's got Freeman on him. Three rattles out. Yeah, historically, the way to beat uh, the, the, the Rick Pitino type presses has been over the top. That, that time, that was the first pass that I've seen over the top by Bryant. So look for Bryant to maybe try to beat it over the top now. Uh, you know, Kevin Keats is a disciple of, of Rick Pitino, so those, those type of presses, you, you want to beat them over the top. Beverly will try a deep three. And another offensive rebound for the Wolfpack, keeps it alive. Yeah, NC State has done a good job on the offensive glass. And there you have Markel Johnson going to the rim. That's okay. You'll, you'll take that. At least it's a shot going to the rim and getting in the paint. Already five offensive rebounds by the Wolfpack. Grant to Coster. And this big man, they think that he might be one of the best players in the NEC. They're looking for him to lead them this year. And he gets another basket inside. That's now six points. Yeah, that was, a nice, that was a nice screen and roll. That time more of a screen and slip, and the weak side didn't get over fast enough. Beverly gets a screen from Hicks. Johnson will try a right wing three, and he knocks it down. NC State just two of eight from behind the arc, but Johnson finds his range. Yeah, that's a better shot right there, a rhythm shot. The ball had swung from side to side, so those are better threes to take. Relentless pressure from NC State defensively. Can that get in your head? Obviously, Bryant started the game, you know, hot as a tea kettle. But right. since then, you see one shot rattle out. You turn it over a couple of times. Their confidence, it seems like, has eroded some here. Yeah, the confidence uh, will erode a little bit. But NC State has to stay on them and not give them uh, an opportunity to gain any type of confidence back. Look at the Johnson three. Crowd just gave a hand to both Darius Hicks and Braxton Beverly. So Coach Keats, he didn't like the defensive effort, didn't right. like some of the easy baskets, right. the uncontested shots, uncontested as you said. Shots, yes. Went to the bench mm -hmm. and got that spark. Now we'll see if the starters come out with uh, renewed vigor. Yeah, they, they should come out with renewed vigor and and uh, not want to go back over there for that. But Coach, <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach Keats has to rotate those bodies in there and keep guys fresh because of the style of play. We got a timeout called by the Bulldogs just outside the media window, window is again that pressure from NC State. It got Coster in a bad situation. He didn't want to turn it over for a tenth time. I mean, they're on pace to have 35 plus turnovers right now. And so they burned yet another timeout. That's already their third. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, if, if you're Bryant, uh, I mean, you don't want to take any timeouts home with you. You use, you're, right. you're on the road. Right. You're on the road. So when you need them, you need them. NC State is now uh, up three points. You don't you don't want to want NC State to get too far out in front of you and let this game be over uh, too quick if you Bryant. So that's a good timeout. They've had to use a few timeouts here because NC State right now is on a 16 to two run over the last four minutes. 
It has been a barrage. And again, it, it comes at you fast. And this is something that we've now seen in all three games under Coach Keats. Yeah. But they lead it by just three. McHugh looking to drive. Here's Lehman, had 12 points against Georgia. McHugh, open three, and he missed it badly. Shot clock violation. Yeah, he wanted it a little bit earlier that time, and Lehman was a little late. Looking, Lehman was looking for someone cutting to the basket for a layup and just got the ball to him a little bit late, and he had to rush the shot, shot air ball. And McHugh averaged just under two points last year. That's not really his thing. They don't rely on him for offense. Better job that time by Bryant boxing out. It looked like they've added a little bit more size into the lineup so that they'll be able to rebound with NC State. Grant with a straight line drive and a left-handed lay-in is good. Yeah, that was a nice drive right there and to the weak hand because if he'd have went with his right hand going up against Jersey 7, it probably would have gotten blocked. Grant into double figures. He's got 10 on four of five shooting. Good drive by Dorn. He's so strong, yep. Towns all over him. Yep. He gets the basket, and he'll get the foul when we come back from the break. Torin Dorn and the Wolfpack. They were in trouble early. They've got a three-point lead at the under eight timeout. 7.46 remaining in the first half. NC State 28, Bryant 25. The Wolfpack in the midst of an 18-4 run with Dorn to the line. They look to add to it. Chucky, what's fueled this run? I think the, the fact that NC State's turned up their defense, they got their hands on loose balls, forced Bryant to turn it over. Also, the fact that NC State has taken the ball to the basket and not relied on a three-point shot, and they have 18 fouls right now on Bryant. Yeah. And uh, now NC State has a total of three. So um, the fact that they're able to get the ball to the basket, get fouled, and just not settle any threes that they need to take right now, they need to be rhythm threes, threes in transition off of offensive rebounds, um, threes where there's a dribble drive, draw and kick, those type of threes. Don't come down, you know, first shot, one pass and shot. That's not what you want to do uh, in order to be able to put Bryant away or, 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 or enable to uh, increase your lead. Boy, Naduba's in trouble. Last touched by Bryant. Naduba is looking for an official. Yeah, he feels like it went off of someone's leg, but hey, sometimes you got to just roll with it, man. And he might be right. Yeah, it looked like it came <laughs> off at Dorn's he knee. He might be right. But it'll go down in the books as another turnover. Right. So NC State started taking the ball to the basket. There Here's Johnson doing it. He makes the layup. So it's funny, partner, they just started listening to your advice. <laughs> the game turned around for him. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're making me look like I know what I'm talking about. That's not about. a coincidence, you know? <laughs> Duba, he didn't want to cross the timeline just yet and get trapped in that quarter. That's going right into the trap set by NC State. I think it's fair to say, first five minutes to now, right. NC State in the half court defense, they picked up their intensity. I think the starters got the message from Coach Keats. Yeah, most definitely they got the message. They picked up, and right there there's another rhythm three though. It was contested, good defense, that was better offense. But it was, a, it was a contested three, but it was a rhythm three. Those rhythm threes, usually they go down. Well, pretty much everything that Grant takes is in rhythm. Oh, what a spin from Freeman. It rolls off the rim. It'll be Bulldog basketball. Yeah, still a nice, nice move by Freeman. That's what you want. You want to get something going to the basket. Now, if you're Bryant now coming in, normally you don't have a small guy taking a hit right here. You see the nice drive right here by Freeman. Good spin. Just was unlucky on the finish. Maybe should have went to the left hand, you know, but I, I'm not out there, so it looks it looks better for the left hand for me since I'm sitting <laughs> over here. But uh, good job by getting to the basket. And if, if you're Bryant, you know, you want to go over the top against this press because that's what's open. Hicks is back in the game for the Wolfpack. They do go over the top, and now Lehman's going to look to challenge your seven. That's not a good idea. The seven-footer erased it. Yeah, big-time block right there by Yurt Seven. Freeman with a blocking foul going against Sebastian Towns, and that's his third foul, I believe. Here's another look, the Turkish seven-footer. Yeah, well, that time Lehman went with the right hand when maybe he should have went with the left hand. Anytime you go with the right hand 
on the left side and you got a shot blocker coming at you, that's more of an opportunity for him to block that shot. So what he should have done is maybe try to shield it, shield the shot uh, with his body and go with that left hand maybe high off the glass. Here at seven has only played four minutes so far in this first half, but making his presence known. You know, he's a guy that came in mm -hmm. with so many expectations right. because when you project him forward, mm -hmm. he has all the tools that you would want in an NBA big man. Where does he need to improve to take his game to the next level? Because he struggled at times right. last year. I think just physically getting in the weight room, getting stronger, because right now he's not really a strong, say, back-to-the-basket guy. In the NBA, you're going to have to play a little bit with your back-to-the-basket. And uh, right now, he's, that's not one of his strengths. I think getting in the weight room and getting his upper body stronger and his lower body stronger, that will help him. Layman blows by here at seven, didn't want to challenge him on the lane. And there's Grant again. He can really yeah. fill it up. 24 against Georgia. He's already got 16 here Ooh. tonight, and he is a perfect four of four from beyond the arc. Yeah, that kid, that kid can really shoot the ball. LeVar Bats Jr., the first signee for Coach Keats, gets in the year at seven. There he is, back yeah. to the basket. He shuffled his feet. Yeah, see, that's where he got a little contact. And when you're not used to playing with your back against the basket, you get a little contact, then you want to try to push back and give some contact. And when you're not used to it, you just, it just doesn't feel right. So that's where he was, uh, that's where year seven was uh, with that particular move. So he just has to work on that and get stronger. Well, Freeman nearly had a steal. Instead, here comes Naduba down the lane, curling, and he curls it up and in. Yeah, he went right up under Yurt Seven's arm. That's how Yurt Seven thought he was going to shoot it with the right hand, and he shot it with the left hand. Freeman forces it. High arcing shot, and it drops. Yeah, that's, that, that might not be the shot that you want, but that time Freeman had a little bit of rhythm, took a couple of dribbles. You know, it's it's not necessarily the best shot, but really right. that speaks to the confidence. Right. So Coach Keats has given him the green light. He says, hey, you know, I didn't I didn't bring you here right. so that you could just pass the ball. <laughs> right. They want him to take 10, 15 shots a game. That's what they like to see from Alec Freeman. Yeah, well, Alec Freeman, he's also a veteran player, so normally coaches have a lot of confidence in those veteran players. Here at seven with a strong rebound after a Grant miss. The first three he's missed tonight. Good pass inside. Hicks finishes. Good pass that time by Markel Johnson. Nice, soft, high pass because there was no, bo no big bodies back there that could get to that ball. Grant will throw the lob. There's Lehman with the lay-in. You know, his brother's in the NBA. A right. lot of people will remember Jake Lehman from Maryland. Very athletic player, and you can see his little brother, he looks a lot like him out there on the court. Yeah, he looks a lot like him body-wise, face-wise. He looks a little bit like he's a little thicker than Jake, though. I mean, he's a freshman. Right. He's a little thicker than Jake. Jake is really thin and wiry. This kid's got a little bit more muscle on him. Grant got into trouble, and I think he'll be bailed out by a foul. I think they're going to get bats here with his first. But, yeah, you look at, I mean, a lot of freshmen – they, they're not quite ready to play because right. they're only 18 years old. Right, right. Yeah, when I came to school, I tell you, I was not ready to play. Yeah. I was a 6'8", uh, what was I, 175. So, <laughs> and that was soaking wet with a couple of uh, quarters in my pocket. I was yeah. 175. So, you know, this kid right here is much more than I weigh, and he's ready to play as a freshman. Yeah, you can't do that. An offensive foul, you can't pivot into a defender as they're coming off. An offensive foul will go against Gus Riley getting his first minutes. And so we'll head to break. We've got a tight one here in the first half. NC State 37, Bryant 35. Welcome back, everybody, here in the PNC Arena alongside Chucky Brown. I'm Andrew Sanders. Well, NC State playing its third game uh, in just five days, and Coach Keats said, you know, when I scheduled it, I know I'm the guy that scheduled it, right. but I didn't even really think about that. He said, but I, I don't have a problem with it at all because right. if you're going to be in postseason play, you're going to win any kind of championship, yep. you're going to have to play every other day or yep. even every, every day. Every, every day. That's right, every day. So, yeah, this is a, you know, normally the college schedule, as far as when I remember, you might play like on a Sunday. Uh, you might play Tuesday. And maybe on a uh, maybe a Saturday, something like that. You know, you play, you can play two, three games in a week, uh, but this is you know three games in five nights. It's yeah. tough when you're not when you're not used to it. But still, there's no excuses. You're young, 18, yep. 19 years old. You just got to come out and play. They've got a ball game on Thursday night as well. And there's an interception by Leonard Freeman as he picked off the inbounds pass. Now Dorn with a euro step. 
Big time move right there on the Euro step, but that was the right play by Bryant to throw it over the top. Now the one thing well, he didn't see the safety sitting back the there. there. <laughs> he didn't see the free safety, Leonard Freeman back there. But the one thing, if I'm if I'm uh, Bryant. I would have a bigger guy taking the ball out. I wouldn't want one of my ball handlers taking the ball out. Right now, they have a ball handler taking the ball out. Good drive yes. by Taylor McHugh, the junior from Centerville, Virginia. And he'll go to the line to look for three. Here we are right there. Pass out of bounds. Picked off by Leonard Freeman. A little extra. You know, he used to play football, too. So he gave him a little <laughs> extra body right there. And a nice Euro step by Torrin Dorn with the finish. But again, you know, Bryant, I mean, maybe the coach has, a, has some type of strategy. But normally... You don't want your ball handlers taken yeah. out. But then again, everybody cannot take the ball out of bounds. People underestimate how important it is to have a guy that can take the ball out of bounds. Free throw good by McHugh. The first time that Bryant has gotten to the line. Beverly feeding Dorn. He looks to attack on the drive. And you can tell right now, NC State, they have a quickness advantage. Right. And they've been able to get into the lane. Well, they got a, they got a quickness and a size advantage, and that's very rare. Normally, it's, it's either a quickness or a size advantage, and right now they have both. Bats collects the turnover. Puts his shoulder down, and that's going to get him in trouble. Second foul on Bats as he bowls over Coster. Yeah, that was just an anxious anxious move by Bats. He's a kid that likes to get the ball to the basket, and right there he's, he probably could have pulled up and been better off because Leonard Freeman had inside position there. So anytime you're in that position and you see a guy standing there waiting on you, go ahead and pull up. Still, you know Coach Keats likes getting the turnover, first right. of all, likes the aggressiveness. Yeah, you can't really scold him for that. You know, he, he, yeah. did, he did do a good thing. And that's what he brings to the table as a true freshman. Now, Coster faked the pass, takes the shot, and the rebound. Oh, it's taken away by McHugh. He just outworked Freeman for the basketball. You know, you're a big guy. You were pretty good at rebounding from right. what I remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great at it, in fact, is... Uh, Grant got into trouble there. You know, when you bring the ball down, right. that's when the little guy can take it from you. That's exactly. one of the main fundamentals. Exactly. You're always taught never to bring the ball down low because a lot of times the little guy gets away with raking your uh -huh. arms and stuff. But the official's not going to bail you out because you put yourself in a bad situation. I'm not surprised at all. You blame the little guys. But they get away yeah, with murder. They get away with everything. murder out there. <laughs> 43-38, Freeman, because he was way up for that rebound. Yes. And he high-pointed the basketball. NC State taking a little time here. Here's the alley-oop. Oh. oh, what a throwdown. <laughs> Torrin Torn with the left-handed hammer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, now see, I didn't know that he could go up and do that. So now I know uh, what he could do. <laughs> big time. That's a big time, big time athletic play. Not only will you see that on SportsCenter later tonight, Chucky, but <laughs> that might be the best dunk I've seen in college basketball so far so this far year. So far this year. So far this wow. year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hard dunk to describe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just you, – when, That's when one you, see, you just send an emoji out, just the eyeballs. And you just tell your friends that he had a nasty dunk. That's all you say. You can't, <laughs> I can't describe it. It was just nasty. It's just – here, I'll show you the face that I made. He's not left-handed, by the way. No, he's not left-handed. So that was a very athletic play to reach back and grab it. Good cut to the basket that time. Well, he's feeling it, Chucky. He's oh, got yeah. 15 points now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's always a solid guy. He's always going to be around, uh, around those numbers because he's a solid player. Like I said, he doesn't do one particular thing great. just does everything well. Little mini 6 0 run for the Wolfpack. Brian hasn't scored in over two minutes and counting. Good look inside. Coster to Grant. Nice pass right there. Bryant was desperate for a basket right there before going into the half. So NC State will hold for the final possession here, up seven, looking to extend it potentially to double digits. Trots a little hesitation. He got into the lane, got it to Freeman who scores it and won. Freeman is a perfect 5 of 5 from the field. He's got 10 points. Yeah, well, I look, look for NC State to do more of this. Right there, nice dribble 
by Markel to get to, to draw the defender. Nice drop off to Lenard Freeman. And as I said, there's no one on the Bryant bench or on their team that's big, big or strong enough to guard Lenard Freeman inside. So he should be able to finish most plays down there unless they get a clean steal. Redshirt senior from Washington, D.C. completes the three-point play. Boy, is NC State glad to have him back and healthy. He says he feels great this season. He's playing like it so far. Yeah, that's another veteran that can provide good veteran leadership out there for him. Boy, Grant's made everything tonight. He's going to have time for one more shot. Here it goes. It's just about the only shot he didn't make. Grant <laughs> leads the way, scoring for both teams with 18 points, but it's Torin Dorn who has 15 for the Wolfpack and one of the best dunks you'll see all season. He's got NC State with a 10-point lead at halftime, 50 to 40. As we throw it to break, we get another look at this slam. We'll go ahead and nominate it. Sports Center top 10 nominee. Wow. Back here in Raleigh, 50 to 40, our halftime score. And we welcome you back to the table alongside Chucky Brown, I'm Andrew Sanders. So Chucky, that was an entertaining first half to watch. It was yeah. up and down. It's what we expected, as I said, at the top of the show. Maybe not quite a track meet, but awfully right. close to it. What stood out to you? What'd you like to see from both of these teams? Um, I liked early on, Bryant was patient, moving the ball around, getting good looks at the three, taking rhythm, rhythm threes. Um, for NC State, what I liked about them is that they didn't panic. They started taking the ball to the basket when they got down. They, they started getting their hands on loose balls um, and creating turnovers. For Bryant in the second half, I look for them to try to throw the ball over the press a little more yeah. because that's where um, they can be successful at. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Again, it was awfully entertaining. We got 90 points. and. Well, Bryant couldn't have started off the game right. any better. They were eight for their first eight from the floor. They were knocking down everything. And really what stood out is Adam Grant. Right, Adam Grant, I mean, he this this young kid can really shoot the ball. And not only was he shooting the ball, he also was nice drive and dish right there. Sure. So he's showing a complete arsenal right here where he's coming off right there. You see a nice rhythm three. Anytime he has the ball in rhythm, and he, he's got such bounce on his shot as well. As you see, he gets off the floor really well. And as far as... um. Uh, NC State goes right here. You see them creating turnovers, being aggressive, going to the ball, and with the with the in insertion of Braxton in the lineup. See right there, he got a hand on a loose ball, and Markell was able to get it. And right here for an easy layup again to Braxton Beverly. And NC State. Really forcing those turnovers, that's when they started to take over the game. Uh -huh. They have 18 points off turnovers in just the first half. And it was the Torin Dorn show towards the end of that first half. He's got 15 points for the Wolfpack, and he was able to get into the lane and drive pretty much at will. Yeah, well, a lot of times early, NC State was taking the three-point shots, and they weren't falling. So NC State, they got a little more wise, and they started taking the ball to the basket and getting those points in the paints because the threes weren't falling. To look at the halftime stats and well Bryant 17 of 27 that's 63 percent they shot 63 percent in the first half and they still find themselves down 10 I mean it's it's almost uh, inconceivable really when you think about it um, I mean what more can they do I know your key right. for them was to make shots they <laughs> did what right. else what else you got well take care of the ball 14 yeah. turnovers yeah. right there so that right there will tell you uh, why they're down. They're shooting 63%. Because if you go in and somebody tells you that, okay, one team is shooting 63%, you'll say, well, how much are they winning by? Yeah. You know, and, and in this case right here, with the 14 turnovers and to NC State only has five turnovers, there you have it. Well, the Wolfpack was able to shoot 57% themselves. And you right. see, it wasn't from three. Right. But this is a team, even when they're struggling from the outside, because of the style that they play, they can have an off night shooting and still score. Right. They can have an off night shooting, but because of the, the pressure defense, getting their hands on the balls, they let their, their, their defense create their offense for them. So that's, and that's what got NC State back into the game. All right, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes right here on ACC Network Extra. Back here at halftime at the PNC Arena. NC State with a 10-point lead as we welcome you back. I'm Andrew Sanders alongside Chucky Brown. Well, Chucky, 
if you will, let's just look a little bit ahead for both of these teams. We still have a half of basketball to play, but first for NC State, they've got a pretty cool tournament coming up. Now, mm -hmm. Thursday, that's at home against Presbyterian. That's actually still part of the Battle for Atlanta's tournament. Okay. Then they're going to head down to the Bahamas to take that's a pretty good vacation, but it's not a vacation. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> right. It's a business trip. Right. First round against Arizona, and then we're going to see who they play from there, either Northern Iowa or SMU. It's a really good field, and it's a pretty good trip. Yeah, that'll be a, a nice uh, opportunity to, to go outside of the country and, and see a, a, another country, but also uh, an opportunity to take care of some business where you see some tough teams. Arizona will definitely be uh, a tough opponent. I think they're third in the country. So it'll be a good measuring stick, um, you know, for the, for the things that we've done so far, all of the deflections that we've gotten. Let's see how we do against, you know, these these top tier guards, sure. Sure. Um, you know, that, that have aspirations of playing in the NBA. Let's see how, how we do against these guards. So that will be a good measuring stick for NC State. And then after that tournament, they've got Penn State in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And right. then for the Bryant Bulldogs. Now, Navy at Rutgers at Hartford, Brown, and at Yale. Bryant, I mean, it's hard to open up your schedule against two high major teams. That's right. what they've done. Right. They'll actually play five in total uh, this season. So the schedule not quite as difficult as Georgia and NC State right. to lead things off. And they get to play their first home game as well. You know, these guys have been on the road since really Thursday. They went down to Georgia. They bust up here. They've been here since Saturday. So they've been on the road for quite a while. But, you know, whether it's NC State in the Bahamas or if it's this trip for Bryant, right. the early season, that's a great time to bond with your team, obviously. So both teams with an opportunity to do that. We've got to hit one more break. When we come back, we'll have second half action here in Raleigh. Welcome back, everybody, to the start of the second half. NC State 50, Brian 40. He's Chucky Brown. I'm Andrew Sanders. We got 90 points in the first half. We expect it to be a good second half as well. I mean, hey, both teams shot over 50%. One thing to note, Chucky, 14 turnovers for Brian in the entirety of the game against Georgia. They coughed it up 14 times in that first half. That NC State pressure really got to them. And with, with Kevin Keats, you know, he wants to play nine, ten guys. They've only been dressing nine because right. Malik Abu is injured. Right. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the broadcast, by the way. But Malik Abu has been injured. But they get Beverly back. Right. And getting him back, that helps their rotation a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, that helps their rotation. That that allows someone a little bit, uh, a little bit of extra rest. You know, while he can come out and spell them. And that, that just allows uh, uh, everyone to have a little bit of extra rest. So it's good to have another body back when you were only dressing nine. Now you can dress ten. Now you can play ten. Obviously, it takes a, a ton of energy to play that style. That's one reason Coach Keats said, hey, as NC State starts the half off with a turnover, he said, hey, we're going to have to be, and we will be, the best conditioned team in the country. Well, right. Bryant starts off the second half the same way they started the first. It's Boshko Koster. Yeah, that time... Uh, Lenard Freeman went to help, and I don't, I don't uh, think anyone was expecting uh, Bosco Costa to step out there and take the three-point shot, and he stepped out there and knocked it down. Johnson with a quickness mismatch. He shoots over Costa. Doran Doran had a heck of a first half, and Costa collects the pass. Naduba, not really a shoot first point guard. Right. He's not going to shoot very often, but he was open. Yeah, he was open that time, and, and, and for Bryant, that's a good shot because that's how they want to play. Oh, that's a pretty move by Al Freeman. Yeah, nice move by Al Freeman. Not, nice and, and, and a good, good court savvy that time and just being very patient with the move and finishing strong at the end. And able to avoid the contact as well, not get into trouble with an offensive foul. But you look at Al Freeman, it, it's kind of not fair. He's tall, right? <laughs> but he can dribble the basketball. He can shoot. There's active hands from Johnson, another deflection. But when you look at Freeman, it will be a turnover. You look at Freeman, he, he can do so much. And, and, oh, by the way, he's experienced, right. and he's experienced in a good way. He made the NCAA tournament all three years at Baylor. Right. Well, he's a guy that's very important and very instrumental uh, for NC State because he's a veteran guy. He can come in and, and tell guys and show guys what winning basketball is. Torin Doran, a blow by and a jam. 
maybe not as stylish, but just as effective as his first dunk. Right. Well, that's <laughs> well, that, that's a great move and, and a smart move by him, knowing that he had a guy he could give up fake to and go straight to the basket and get those points in the paint that NC State needs. 17 for Dorn. Good pressure by NC State. Good pressure. Washko Koster with a couple of words. Yeah, I don't think he felt like the ball went off him, but that was good pressure that time by NC State getting good hands on the ball and forcing a tough pass right there, a tough one-handed pass at that. NC State runs a ball screen for Johnson. Brian doesn't switch. Freeman, nice. tough fall away. Nice. That was a nice shot in rhythm right there, a nice fadeaway in rhythm. He started with that nice drive, getting his confidence up, and Lehman bobbled it, couldn't regather. And now here's the Wolfpack again, going to put their head down and go in transition. Well, that'll be Wolfpack ball. Grant just caught it. Yeah, good drive that time by Freeman in transition, going straight to the basket and trying to get a foul. Didn't finish the shot but he got another attempt. The NC State was able to retain the ball. Just caught the ball, <laughs> both feet out of bounds. <laughs> it's like a wide receiver, right? You got to know where the sideline is. You got to know, know where, where the baseline line. is. That's right. That's right. Johnson with the feet inside. And Leonard Freeman, he's so big, but he missed the bunny, and Towns boxed him out. Yeah, that time he got caught up under the basket and wasn't able to jump back out and finish the shot. That's the first shot that he's missed so far tonight. Freeman now five of six. Now, Coster will try another three, and look at Johnson. He was up there above Towns. That's the point guard. Yeah, Markell has some good hops. So at that time, he was able to get a running start and jump for the rebound and was able to knock it away. Johnson having himself a good game. He's got five points, mm. make it seven and eight assists. Yeah, nice shot right there, getting in the paint. And with a nice little soft floater. And here's another stat that Coach Keats, I'm sure, will love. Eight assists. He's only turned it over once. Yep. That's what you want your point guard to do. You don't you don't want your, your, your guys that are going to handle the ball turning the ball over. So if Markell can play like that, he'll, I'm sure he'll never get in Coach Keats' doghouse. Nice feed inside. Grant to Towns as Freeman really had him played up. He was fronting them. Yeah, that was a good uh, high-low. The best place to, to pass the ball in a high-low situation is from the top, and there was no weak side help. Johnson will pull it out, 20 on the shot clock. Mismatch inside. Freeman was fouled. Yeah, Markell was patient that time and waited for Lenard to duck in. We've got a timeout on the floor, 58-45, NC State up 13. Fifteen thirty-five remaining in the second half. NC State with a 13-point lead in part thanks to number one, Leonard Freeman. 11 points. He's got three rebounds. And Chucky, what a great story. He is a redshirt senior from Washington, D.C. He's kind of like the ultimate glue guy, mm -hmm. I guess you could say, because he does a ton of little things for NC right. State. He doesn't need the ball, mm -hmm. but he can score it. He can rebound it well. Kind of amazing. You know, he had surgery. Right. Had a rod inserted in his shin over right. a foot long. Right. He ended up missing the better part of two years. And mm -hmm. his first game in 604 days mm. was the opener against VMI. He came out with 15 points, had six rebounds. He's playing well again tonight for the Wolfpack. And they just love having him back. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a very instrumental guy to have on the defense as well because when he had played a couple of years ago, he was a guy that, that you can remember that, that took charges and clogged up the lane. Uh, for NC State, and he's a guy that's very instrumental because he knows who he is and does not try to be a player that he's not. You don't see him out here taking a whole lot of jump shots and stuff. Everything yeah. he does uh, are, are things that he can do, and, and he is who he is, and that's what I love about him. You might remember that the last time he played really significant minutes in a season, NC State made the Sweet 16 that year. Right. They knocked off, you might remember, the, the one seed Villanova. Yes, yes, I do. I remember that, yes. So he like, he's a guy, he's been there, and and – you know, he said himself that he's not really a vocal guy. He's a leader by example. And sometimes those are your best leaders when they want you to do something, but they also do it. They, they don't, they don't, it's not 
you know, do as I say, not as I do, you know. <laughs> foul on Johnson. He fouls Naduba. And that is just the second foul on Markel Johnson. Yeah, just a little, just a little bit aggressive, a little bit of body contact. The officials don't want it to get too crazy, so they'll they'll call it and let the players know how they're going to call the game. Again, this has been a point of emphasis. It feels like the last five or six years, but they want as Yurt Seven got a push before he blocked the ball up right. top, and <laughs> Brian is calling for a goaltend. I don't know if it was necessarily on the way down as the second foul on the big seven put putter, uh, Yurt Seven. But so let me talk about this freedom of movement. Right. In theory, if it works, it's great, right? right because right. then we see more games where it's 50 to 40 right. at halftime, right. right? High scores. Yeah, I think, think the, the offense um, really has the advantage because the defense is not allowed uh, to put their hands on you. Any type of, uh, any type of, of uh, contact that maybe knocks an uh, offensive player off their path, that's usually going to be called yeah. on a defensive player. So it's not as much... Uh, not as much contact would be allowed, so that's why you probably have seen the switch from, like, you don't see the big power guys like uh, like uh, Charles Oakley and uh, Anthony Mason. So I was going to bring guys. that up because when yeah. you played in the NBA, oh. there wasn't freedom of movement. Oh, it no. was going to the paint at your own risk. You go at your own risk. Uh, you get in there if you could, and if you get <laughs> in there, you better be strong enough to finish because they let a lot of things go. But then you had the, the bad boys, the Detroit Pistons, and you had the Rick Mahorns, and, you know, the guys were so big and strong. And, you know, you had to do something about that. So that's what they've done. You know, I enjoy the game played either way. I like a physical game, okay. and I like to see a game where there's freedom of movement and you can't touch the guy. So either way, I like it. Freeman misses the shot, and here comes McHugh and the Bulldogs. Dishes it off. Brandon Carroll getting his first minutes. Lehman is short on a three. So they've got Lehman and Carroll on the floor right now. A couple of freshmen. Transition three in and out, but there's Dorn. Another second chance opportunity. Yeah, that's a good three that time by Freeman. Another good shot right there. He just missed it. But that's, those are good shots. Lehman throws it away as he tripped over Johnson, and you're at seven misses the jump hook. The rim's got a lid on it right now on this end for NC State. Here comes Grant. Rainmaker, no good. Yeah, that was a contested shot that time by Yurt Seven. That was a little bit of a tougher shot uh, to make right there. We've seen Yurt Seven with a huge block on Lehman. He will affect shots, and Freeman will get called for extending his arm, I believe, his second foul. Yeah, anytime you drive to the basket, if you extend that arm, you pick it up, and it even looks funny, you're mm -hmm. going to get that call. Whether you, whether you uh, push off or not, if the defender is able to sell it, then the officials will buy it. <laughs> so Freeman will come out, and Braxton Beverly gave NC State a spark in that first half. He's back in there for the first time here in the second. Got an outlet, and Beverly got his hand in there and stripped Grant. Boy, he's got such active hands. Yeah, good hustle that time. Uh, the ball was brought down right there. You see it was, a, it was a layup if he'd have kept it high, but then he brought it down, and Beverly was able to capitalize on that mistake. And if you're NC State, you know, you don't want to see Grant make a layup because right now he's been a little calm as far as the jump shots have gone. He really hadn't taken many uh, and, and, uh, as far as, like, the three-point shot like he was in the first half. Towns with a left hand, and your seven will be called with the body this time. Now, foul trouble was a problem for him last year. Yeah. Right? He fouled out already once this season, and, Coach Keith said, yeah, you know, I think he needs to get better. Right, right. there, is there a whole lot he can do? Uh, not really. That was a good move that time. Uh, it, was a, it was a rip through at the free throw line, and, and you know, it was, a, it was a nice quick move, and there wasn't really much he could have done other than, you know, maybe give a little bit um, less pressure, uh, you know, back away a little bit and make him finish, make him finish the shot at the end of the play. But, you know, it, right there he was going for the block shot, and got a little bit of contact, and then again, you go to that freedom of movement, advantage, disadvantage. Uh, the officials felt like the defender gained an advantage. Good tip out from Coster. Towns gets an offensive rebound. How about this? It's the Bulldogs hitting the glass, and there's your seven. Swats it. Good block. Beverly, transition. Bats. Boy, he can really drive the basketball. 
And Dorn on the cleanup. Yeah, right now you're watching NC State drive to the basket, and they're not sitting around that three-point line. You see Dorn, you see your seven, you see Freeman. All of these guys are in the paint looking to get offensive rebounds because they know they have a size advantage. McHugh breaks the pressure. Towns, well, he missed a couple of free throws. That looked, like, that looked like a good shot from 18. Yeah, that was a good shot, good rhythm shot, a nice draw and kick shot right there, and he just knocked it down right at the free throw line, 15, 16 feet. There's that back to the basket play you're talking about, and Yurt Seven has missed a couple from close range now. Yeah, he just has to get stronger and get used to that type of contact down there. Long two, Coster, no good. And Boy, there's Towns. He's only six foot five, but he brought it down. Freeman got his hand in. Yep, anytime you bring it down, those little guards, they're going to be down there picking at it. That's a three. That's not his game, at least not yet. Right, that's not his game yet. You know, anytime, you know, freshmen sometimes tend to take a bad shot here or there. You know, that's not his shot. His thing is getting to the basket. And right there, we call those, those heat check shots. So he just wanted to see, uh, you know, how his jumper was flowing in this game. That's now 19 turnovers for Bryant. Well, as much offense as we got in the first half, things have stagnated for both teams a little bit here in the second. NC State right now, one for its last eight. Yeah, one thing that NC State is trying to do, though, is get the ball to the basket. And you might see a little bit of tired legs there uh, from Braxton Beverly, but then he's he going up again with it. But see, that, those are tired legs uh, from Beverly. You know, it, it's different when you practice and then you come to a game situation. It's totally different. So he just has to get his game legs, and he'll be fine. There's Malik Abu, who is, and I said we were going <laughs> to talk about this later. I'm sure NC right. State fans are, are interested and, and really – I guess we don't have any inside information that we can really give out. But what Coach Keats has said publicly is that, hey, I'm not going to play Malik until he is fully 100%. Right. Now, there's been some speculation. Will that be on Thursday against Presbyterian, or will that be in the Bahamas? That's yet to be decided. Right. However, he's moving around well. He looks like if he's not 100% right now, and he's not because he's not playing tonight, right. he's awfully close. Right. Yeah, he'll, he'll be back, um, you know, and, and Coach Keats is doing the right thing with him by – Take, taking his time bringing him back because it's a long season. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't bring him back until uh, after the Bahamas or before, whenever, whenever he decides to bring him back, I'm sure it'll be the right time because you don't want to bring a guy back and then he re-injures something and then, then now you lose him for even longer. Wolfpack fans are certainly anxious to get him back. This team has, has already looked good in their pressure, and there was a quote from Coach Keats. He said, hey, I want – Malik to lead the nation in dunks okay. next year. Okay, and that's Because good. of the type of player he is, he can run the floor in the style that they're going to play. He says right. he should lead the, the nation in dunks. Yeah, he can, and he does like to dunk the ball, so he, it's a possibility that he'll be able to do that. Yurt Seven gets scored on by the six foot five Towns, and he fouls him again, a fourth foul. And this has been the problem for Yurt Seven as we head to break. You know, when he gets fouls, he can pick them up in a flurry. Right. But how about Towns and the Bulldogs? Hey, they're hanging in there. Big number 54, welcome back. Three weeks off, he's playing and he's coming up big. Thursday, NC State will host Presbyterian right here in the PNC Arena. You can watch all the action on the ACC Network Extra starting at 7 o'clock. Out of the break, Towns could not complete the three-point play. And NC State has an 11-point lead here despite struggling shooting here in the second half. Hicks had it knocked away after he aborted it up. Freeman is a bully down low, and he scores it. NC State, before that, had been one of their last 13 in this half before Freeman's bucket. Yeah, Lenard Freeman is just too strong, too big down there for anyone on the Bryant team. And that's one thing where, you know, obviously you have so much rehab to do on right. the shin, on the lower body. Right. But when you sit out for almost two years and you get older, you get to be 20, 21, 22. Right. Your body matures. Right. You get in that weight room, and he looks a little bigger. Yes, yes. What they call that, what we used to call it what, grown man strength. Yeah. You know, Lenard Freeman may have grown man strength out there. Well, how about the swipe from Bats? Lehman was thinking he was in for a dunk. Instead, here comes Bats, head down. Well, this place would have exploded. 
had that gone in. So he's shown you just a flash right there of right. what he's capable of. Right, that was good hustle that time, uh, Bats. You see Bats getting back, getting a nice beeline to cut Lehman off. He got the steal, pushed it down, and now he does what he does. He's in, in the open, open court, and he likes to get to the basket. What better time to get to the basket than in an open court? You know, it's, it's pretty interesting in a situation like right now uh -huh. when both Mark Hill Johnson and LeVar Bats are on the floor for NC State, it's really almost impossible for other teams to match their speed. Right. Yeah, they're, they're two guards that like to get after it. They're, they're athletic guards. They, 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 they have good speed. So in order for you to combat that, your guards better be of, of equal ability. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I don't see, uh, see that out there uh, uh, right now for Bryant. Bats just put in his first point of the night. There's his second. Bats has two steals tonight, NC State with 11 as a team. So it's not just the pressure that causes Bryant to throw the ball away. You know, there's a difference between a dead ball turnover right. and a live ball, and NC State has 11 steals. That's, that's led to an easy break. Yes, that's led to a, a easy breaks for NC State. Anytime they're able to set up uh, their pressure, that's going to be a problem for Bryant. And right here you see another turnover by Bryant. They wanted probably a kick ball, but any time that you throw the ball into the opponent's foot or the defender's foot, uh, the referee, is that the referee's discretion whether yeah, they're going to call it a kick ball? Yeah, it's got to be a kicking motion. Yeah, it's got to be a kicking motion, exactly. So that time the ball was thrown at the leg of the NC State defender, so that time it could not be a kick ball. Coach O'Shea looking on. Got to feel great about the way his team has shot the ball tonight. Lob inside, oh. there's Freeman, and he's undercut, scores the basket. And things are starting to get a little chippy here. Some of the Wolfpack players didn't like that. I don't, I don't know, we'll see on the replay. It didn't seem like there was really any harm here from Coster, but yeah, I don't think he didn't that, know I think Freeman was, was behind him. Yeah, he didn't know. He, he just saw the ball going up, and he was backing up. So uh, everybody just calm down. And let's play basketball. <laughs> that's what we came here to do. We came here to play basketball. Absolutely. <laughs> By the way, that's the ninth assist for Markel Johnson. So that's three games in a row he's got nine assists. All right. And if he continues to do that, this offense will be all right. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's very capable of doing that. And like I said, he had an opportunity to sit and watch a little bit last year and watch how Dennis Smith did things. I know you, you may have wanted more wins, but still, there were things that he could learn, and I'm sure he sat and learned, and practicing against Dennis every day, that probably also helped him. I mentioned earlier that he just turned 19 last month. It's hard to believe, because he does have experience, because he played a lot last season, but he's the second youngest guy on the team behind only LeVar Bats. Wow, well, that, that's that's another good thing. So he's learning, and he's young, so he'll, he'll be a really good player in a couple of years. Well, he's a good player now, but he'll be a really good player. <laughs> That slapped it away from Lehman, last touched by number three. LeVar Bats, four-star recruit, right. the first signee in the Kevin Keats era. Since then, you know, they've got four uh, national letters of intent already, I believe, okay. for recruits coming in next year. But there always has to be the first guy to buy right. in and say, hey, I believe in what you're doing. LeVar Bats is that guy at right. the very start of the Kevin Keats era. Big rebound for Markel Johnson. He can push. sky for a point guard. Freeman, tough, down the lane. Still, those are shots that if you're NC State, you don't mind those shots in the paint and you miss them. You will eventually finish those if you keep attacking the paint. Nice drive by Naduba, but he misses the lay-in. 68-50. Another Dorn dunk makes it a 20-point lead. Yeah, good job of Markel Johnson keeping his head up looking up the floor and getting good eye contact with Torin Dorn and able to throw the lob, and he was able to finish. Torin Dorn, 21 points. He's 9 of 10 from the field. He's got three dunks by my count, one of them one of the nastiest you'll see this season. <laughs> Just nasty. Cock it all the way back with a left hand on an alley-oop. There's another deflection. But Towns regathers. You know what? He's undersized. Right. He's just six foot five. Right. But you can tell he's a load down low, and he knows how to use his body and position it. Yeah, right here you see the nice lob played to Torrin Dorn from Markel Johnson. But Markel Johnson had his head up and was able to see that. So for young players, always keep your head up when you're dribbling the ball, when you're practicing. Practice with your head up dribbling the ball. And as you were talking about uh, uh, um, 
him being a load right here at the free throw line. He, he is a load and knows how to use his body. And he I can see him being a, a, a real problem for teams come come uh, conference play because when he had when Towns had Yurt seven on the block that what yeah. drew Yurt seven fourth foul he got Yurt seven on his hip yeah and right there it was over I don't care if you're eight foot tall <laughs> if you if, if if Towns gets you on the hip it's over because he's very compact low to the ground and very strong too. Towns makes a free throw he's now one of five so. He's hanging his head a little bit because of inability to make free throws. But he gets that last one down. They call him Bash, yeah. and they're glad to have him back. And Coach O'Shea said, hey, that's our best inside player. They didn't have him for Georgia right. after the appendectomy. Right. But he has played some tonight, and he will be hopefully ready to go for NEC play by the time that rolls around. Yeah, yeah, he'll be ready. They're, they'll be ready. They're just working him back in. So, yeah, they'll be ready. Beverly lost the handle. Last touched Nine. by the Bulldogs. So NC State had been playing really a seven-man rotation. You could say eight because Darius Hicks was getting about 10 minutes a game. But now with Beverly, eight. nine guys playing. Malika Boo is going to come back. Perhaps someone will lose minutes because of that. Well, obviously, people are going to lose minutes. Yes. The question is, will someone no longer play? But, you know, eight, nine. That's going to be the rotation for Coach Keats as he continues to sub out, get fresh legs, and keep that pressure up. Yeah, well, adding adding Malik Abu back will just add another veteran player and another veteran front line player as well. This is Grant. Three and the foul. Yeah, he fouled him. He got him. I could see it. It was, a, it was he hit him on the arm. Uh, on the way up, but Braxton Beverly was just trying to get out there to contest the shot, and he did hit him on the arm. 21 points for Adam Grant, and he is 5 of 8 from the Bonusphere. We'll get another look at it here. He's been just about unconscious from downtown. Yeah, he, he, he got up so high on his shot, too. He's got really good legs on his jump shot. So Adam Grant, who led all NEC freshmen in scoring last year, he scored 13 and a half in his rookie campaign. He is back after being named NEC All-Freshman Team. And he's a, he's a player, yeah, 24 he's, against Georgia. He's already yeah. got 21 with eight minutes to go. And again, if he can get some help, yeah. that's why we think that this team is better than eighth yeah. in the NEC, because you see Coster can play a little bit. Naduba is a good point guard. Right. Towns down low. Right. They've got some pieces that have given NC State trouble. They're going to give some teams in the Northeastern Conference trouble as well. Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got some pieces. And he led all freshmen last year. I look for him to lead all sophomores this year. <laughs> so he, uh, he can put the ball in the hole. Now, they're, they're just – working Towns back into the game. So once Towns gets back in, they have a low post presence, have somebody who can attract the double team. You know, that'll open things up for them outside even more. But they, I look for them to have a pretty good year. I'm going to follow them this year and see what kind of year they have. But I'm looking for them to have a, a much better than an eight, eight spot because they're doing this against pretty good guards out here. NC State has some pretty good guards. Grant threw his legs a couple of times. Tough drive. And he'll foul. get called for the offensive foul. Maybe a little too tough of a drive for Grant. But he, along with Naduba and Towns, those sophomores on this team right. make up 64% of the returning scoring is uh, Freeman after the offensive foul. That yeah. was rude. Yeah, that blocked time. it straight down. That <laughs> That's was a volleyball spike. <laughs> that time, you know, Bats was just being a pest right there. So Bats kind of caused him to uh, create that push off. Oh, a lot of contact, yeah. Layman gets called for the foul. And that will take us to break. Well, NC State has started to pull away here in the second half. It was 10 points at halftime. The lead has ballooned to 19 as we head to the under eight timeout. Welcome back, everybody. Along with Chucky Brown, I'm Andrew Sanders. 19-point lead for NC State, and a big reason why has been their ability 
to turn Brian over. That pressure defense, we've talked about it all night. Again, how about this? The strength of the Wolf is the pack. Mm -hmm. Again, against VMI, against Charleston Southern, they forced more turnovers than field goals allowed. And right now they're dead even at 22 apiece. So already that's a pretty impressive stat. But I'll do you one better. Mm -hmm. The last time NC State forced an opponent like that, more turnovers than field goals allowed, was in... 2012 mm -hmm. against Wake Forest. And oh, wow. that was the last time that it happened. So now it's happened in two games already and close to, dangerously close to, a third game. It's just remarkable. Yeah, it's remarkable. That shows the effort. Uh, that shows the defense. That shows them getting hands on the ball, just being active. And, and you know, that's, that's really a tough thing to do. I don't care who you're playing against. That's, a, that's really a tough thing to do. So, And that helps build your confidence going on to play these tougher teams when you get ready to play in this battle for Atlantis and then you play in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And then after that, you're going to start getting ready for conference play. So this would be good. This is this is good confidence uh, for the Wolfpack and, and, and for, their, for their system, for their defensive system. A lot of confidence already. And again, they're just coming together. That court violation called, by the way, that's what they went to the monitor to double check. And so... That is another turnover. Right. Dorn. Offensive rebound and a stick back again. Boy, Leonard Freeman is so big for this team. But to, to elaborate on that point just a little bit more, Chucky, I know, you know some people will say, oh, well, it's early on. It's right. the non-conference. You, know, right. you did against Wake Forest. Well, who have, you, who have you played so far? Right. Well, they had non-conference games in 2013, 2014, right. 15, 16. So it's not something that happens. It, it just tells you just how well they've been defending. Right. And, uh, you know, they've played non-conference games before. So right. I, don't, I don't really get that argument. Well, yeah, I mean, people are going to have an argument no matter what you say. <laughs> so to, 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 uh, to go ahead and just debate with them, you make, you make your points. And if, if, if they don't understand your point, then, hey, okay, we'll just move on. And I have my point, you have yours. <laughs> Chucky Brown giving you good social media and life advice right there. Coster with the bucket. They cut it to 78-57. And a feed, the big dog. A left-handed hook, like the move, not the finish. Yeah, still a good shot by Leonard Freeman. He got deep post position, just didn't finish the shot. And if you're a big guy, you get that kind of position you want it every time. Here's Tal's oh, yeah. same position. And they call a foul on Freeman. Yeah, that time Freeman gave him a little too much body. You got two big guys like that going at it, banging a little bit, and it was a little bit of a push. Here you see Lenard gave him a little bit of a push, knocked him off, off balance a little bit, and uh, 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 they missed the shot. Uh, uh, Towns missed the shot. So Freeman will come out. Yurt seven in with his four fouls. And a banked in free throw. But I didn't the, see him call it. Yeah, he didn't call it, but I think the crowd uh, wanted him to miss for the promotion. <laughs> That's going to keep calling out chicken tenders. So the, <laughs> <laughs> so the Chick-fil-A, two, two missed free throws is, a, is, a, is some chicken tenders from Chick-fil-A, so he made them both. <laughs> Just give him even more incentive to, to make some noise. It's a good promotion. Yeah, it is a good promotion. I think you, have, you probably have to show your ticket for it, right? We can't. Yeah, we, we can't, can't get, get one. Then. Okay. Maybe we can show our press pass. We'll just one. yeah, we'll just root <laughs> for everybody to make their free throws, I guess. Grant, big drive, and it just spun out of his hand. Yeah, good defense by Torn Dorn that time. Markel Johnson in the open floor. Nice, nice move by Markel. Nice that he saw no shot blocker back there and just attacked the rim. Another turnover. And Torn with a two-handed flush. 26 points for number two. Nice play that time to come from behind and get a tap and get a steal for the NC State Wolfpack. I know physically it'll wear on you. As Towns misses badly. Mentally, that's yes. got to wear on you too, the, the constant pressure, 40 yes. minutes. Yes, the constant pressure. And then when you do pass the ball, if someone, get, someone gets a hand on it, now you're a little bit tentative when you do pass it. Well, you're at seven is having a tough night tonight. 
Yeah, he's having a tough night. I mean, he has he has to maybe not um, play with his back to the basket. Maybe when he catches it, turn and face because that's what he's comfortable doing. So do what you're comfortable doing out there. So that, that, that would be the advice that I would give him. Don't hang your head. You know, you're struggling a little bit with back to the basket moves. So since you're struggling with that particular area, do what you do best. Johnson is fouled on his way to the basket. They might have gotten Grant right there. Nine points, 10 assists for the sophomore point guard. Yeah, Markel Johnson is just too much uh, for Bryant to, to be able to handle. He, he, he's big, he's fast, yeah, he's got good quickness. You know, he's, a, he's a monster on defense with his hands. I mean, he's just so active. So he's just a little bit more, uh, and, he, and he's probably better than any guard that they're probably going to see during the season. So, this, like I said, this would be a good measuring stick um, for Bryant to see, you know, the pieces that they have and what, what they're going to be dealing with in their conference. Well, Torin Dorn comes out to a nice hand, 26 points for Dorn as Johnson gets the second free throw. Let's get another look at some of the work from Torin uh. Dorn today. Nice. Aggressive. It's been a dunk show for him, yes. shooting a high percentage. He's got the mid-range going as well. And the Wolfpack, 83-61. So 26 points for Dorn tonight. That ties a career high. He last scored 26 at Western Kentucky on January 8th, 2015. Mm. So just barely into 2015. That was back in his UNC Charlotte days. Uh -huh. He spent his freshman year there. He was the freshman of the year. We're going to take a timeout now on the floor, 83-61. We'll be back in just a moment. Five oh nine remaining here in the second half. You look at the scoring distribution for NC State. Tiger career high, Torrin Dorn, 26 points. Leonard Freeman has a new career high. Previous career high was, by the way, Friday against VMI. It was right. 15. Now he's got 20. Al Freeman getting it done, and Markel Johnson has a double-double, 10 points, 10 assists. And Towns blows by Yurt Seven and scores. Yeah, that time Yurt Seven was more conscious of fouling, so his defense was was a little little bit lax right there, and, and, and uh, Towns saw that, so he just took it right at him. Anytime you know that guy's got four fouls, you got to go. Right got to go him, right, right at him. Got to go right at him. There's an easy bucket for your seven. Nice play again by Markel Johnson, putting it right over the top. There's no one out here as big as your seven. He put the ball where no one but your seven could get it. First bucket for your seven, and the 11th assist for number 11, Markel Johnson. Oh, the student section here, they want NC State to foul Towns because they think he's a good candidate to miss both free throws. Right, yeah, I guess they want those chicken tenders, uh, and they think he can help everyone in here get the chicken tenders. I mean, hey, <laughs> when I was in college, I was hungry all the time. I didn't have that much money. I can't blame yeah, him that much. You, me and you both. <laughs> Here's Sam Hunt. He's been pretty quiet tonight. They work the ball around quickly. And we'll take our final media timeout. NC State up 20. With 348 remaining. He's Chucky Brown. I'm Andrew Sanders. NC State inbounding. Here's Darius Hicks, the sophomore from Mississippi, scores it. Yeah, good move that time. Uh, Darius Hicks basically bullying his way to the basket and finishing with a left hand. He's had a nice game. He's got eight points in under 10 minutes. Yeah, he's come in and played hard and just gave, just 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 been giving a lot of effort out there. And good things happen when you put forth the effort. Bryant at one point in the first couple of minutes had a 12-point lead. Right. They were making everything. Started eight of eight. Now they've got 24 turnovers and. You know, when Coach O'Shea looks at the tape later right. and he talks to his team about this game, that, that's got to be what he highlights, right? Oh, yeah, because you you coming on the road, and first you come off, you start out making shots, which is a good thing. 
you want to take care of the ball, especially on the road. So now you come on, you're, you're out, you're outmatched anyway when you're facing an NC State team, and now you're going to give them extra opportunities. So when you're when you're the underdog and you're on the road, the last thing you want to do is give a team extra opportunities, and they did that tonight with NC State. Nice hand for Sean Kirk, who's into the ball game now. Braxton Beverly for a three. A little too strong. Yeah, that's a He's good a shot. He's a very good shooter. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't really shown that tonight, but really not all that surprising as we've got a foul here underneath. Really not all that surprising considering the roller coaster of emotions oh, yeah. he's, he's been on when, as we as we showed you on the timeline, he right. was denied, then his appeal was denied. Right. And, and he probably came into the he probably came to the arena not thinking he was going to be able right, to play. Exactly. So that takes a, a, a certain amount of mental preparation. When you know you're going to play, there's a there's a different type of mental preparation that you have. Or, or if you know you're suiting up. He didn't even know that he was suiting up. Right. So when you know you're going to suit up, you know there's an opportunity for you to play. He didn't even think he was going to be suiting up to play. So when he got here to play, you know, it was, a, it was a pleasant surprise. I'm sure he's happy to get out there. But also, you know, you, you have to be mentally uh, ready and your legs also. So he doesn't have game legs yet. He still has the practice legs, but he'll get the game legs as he plays more. And let's remember, He's a true freshman, even right. though they were considering him at a time as being a transfer. This, these are his first college minutes ever. How right. about you're at seven? Tough night, but he's got the range. He's got all the tools, Chucky. But that's what he's good at. He's good at facing the basket, shooting the ball. So he's not a good back-to-the-basket guy. So when, while he's not, that, that's your weakness. So don't do that or, or, or don't. Uh, put him in those type of positions where he has to play with his back to the basket because he's not that type of player. He's a very good turn face shooter, you know, good in the pick and pop situations. Put him in, the, in those type of situations. He's very good at it. And here at seven will now have to come out. He's got five points. He's got five fouls as well. And you see here, I mean, he's seven feet. Right. He's a good passer. Mm -hmm. He can step out to the three-point line. By the way, NC State, the one area where they've really not shined tonight, they're 3 of 18 after that three-point basket by year <laughs> seven right. from outside. This is a team, they've struggled all night shooting the three. Right. And now he has to go to the bench. He struggled with foul troubles. And, right. you know, Wolfpack fans will tell you, you know, obviously they're rooting for him. Right. But it's it's something that, that is on the mind of, obviously, year at seven and the fan base as yeah. well. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's a guy. You know, you have some guys that are – uh, good college players and might not be very good professional players. Now he he might he might be struggle he might struggle in the college game, but then when he goes on to play professionally, which we know he will, he may have a better professional career sure. because his game is more suited for the professional level. But if he does figure out that back to the basket oh, game, oh, and that's what they're oh. hoping for this year, right? Uh, the sky's the limit for this guy. Right, the sky will be the limit, but also he has to have. Uh, the, 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 the proper help, uh, putting him in the right positions, the proper coaching, the proper strength training, and all that has to come into play for him to, to develop the back-to-the-basket game. The Duba shot no good. Sean Kirk corrals the rebound. He's a fan favorite. Keep an eye out for him. One of the most athletic guys you'll see. That's is fouled by Naduba. Just in case, they always try to throw number 22 a lob and just see if he can do something <laughs> special. But, you know, Torin Dorn, that, right. was a, that was a Sean Kirk-like dunk. That was a that Sean Kirk-like dunk. Well, yeah, I've, I've seen uh, Sean Kirk get off the floor as well. Now, now, if that lob had been thrown to Sean Kirk, I would probably wouldn't have been that surprised because I've seen that from him before. But I have not seen that from Torin Dorn. Now I know that he's capable of doing that. <laughs> It's not really something you can expect from no. somebody unless you've seen it before. Unless you've seen it, it, it before. It's basically su superhuman. <laughs> right. Again, Bats is still working on his shot, but right. again, he's shown you he's going to get to the line. Oh, because yeah. of his aggressiveness and his quick first step, he's able to get around just about anybody. Oh, yeah, he's going to get to the line because he gets to the basket. Uh, he's strong with the ball. The thing he'll have to be uh, looking for is when guys clog that lane up and they're waiting on him. Kirk, jumper no good. And there's Darius Hicks again on the cleanup. That's 16 offensive rebounds now for the Wolfpack. 
and Hicks is in the double figures. Yeah, that was Darius Hicks that time just hanging around and hanging around, and the ball fell right to him. Bats with the steal. And that's going to be an intentional foul, and Hicks wraps up Bats. He didn't like that very much. That's now five fouls on Naduba. And luckily, Bats looks like he's all right. That's yeah. just unnecessary. Yeah, that was unnecessary. But, you know, then again, you know, when, 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 you're, when you're Brian and then you, 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 you get a little frustrated in this type oh, of situation. No doubt. So you, you have to try to uh, control that. So uh, luckily or unluckily, whatever, he fouled out of the game. And, you know, if, if you're bats in that particular situation, you know, being, you know, being around the game a while, Maybe that time might be a time to just pull it back out. You have enough. You have enough points. Well, you know he's young, so he wants to score. I think he so was. He, he was thinking if I can get he, one more. Step, he wants I'm to get dunk one. This. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't blame him for that. But you know, sometimes you know, guys, when he gets a little older, you know, he'll see. Hey, I'm, I'm see with this happening to him right here. When he gets a little older and he's in this situation, he probably will pull it back out, run some clock. You know, because you, you got enough points. It, it, the game is pretty much over. It's also it's a little easy to get frustrated yes. when NC State everything they do to you defensively yes. nothing is easy. Yes, yes. So here's Bats. Oh, nice block. Yeah, good block right there. How about there. that? We haven't seen very much tonight from Hunter Ware at all. Right. The senior from Georgia. He started the ball game, but hasn't played very much. This is a really nice block. Hasn't done much in his 16 minutes. It's attempted just one shot. Not sure if that was a shot or a pass from Beverly. Yeah, I believe it was a shot. It was a little floater right there. It just fell a little short and off to the left. Here's Brandon Carroll. Layman's three is good. He's going to be quite a player for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he's going to be a really good player. Got a nice body, very active, long. And LaVar Bats will dribble this out. 95-72. So Bryant gave NC State really its best shot tonight. They played well in many respects, but the defense was suffocating. The Wolfpack nearly score 100. This team's fun to watch, Chuck. Yeah, this team is fun to watch. They get after it. They put forth the effort. And hey, who knows what can happen there. They're a veteran team, and I think that's that's been um, underestimated by the pundits about uh, or where they're going to finish in the ACC. NC State came into tonight averaging 90 points a game. Well, they put 95 up on the board against Bryant. For our great crew here in Raleigh, partner Chucky Brown. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Andrew Sanders saying so long from Raleigh. Again, the final score, 95-72. Braxton Beverly plays in his first college game, and the Wolfpack win, and it proved to 3-0. This has been a presentation of ESPN.